This video will demonstrate the performance of a Kendall's tau correlation. Uh, this correlation is an alternative to the Spearman rank correlation. Um, and there are some pros and cons to using uh, either of these, and I'll talk about those a little bit before we get into the actual analysis. Now, what the Kendall's tau does, the logic behind this analysis, is it measures the agreement and disagreement of pairs of data. So as you can see here in this uh, data set, we have um, three evaluators that have evaluated a performance of a skill, let's say a gymnastics routine or a figure skating routine, and they score them and they rank them from the best performance ranked first to the, to the uh, worst or least effective performance ranked as 15th. And so if we wanted to look at the relationship between two evaluators' ranks of this performance, um, we would be able to do Kendall's Tau or Spearman Rank. But what Kendall's Tau does, it actually looks for how many pairs of data agree, the proportion of, of pairs of data that agree, and then it subtracts from that number the pairs of data that disagree. This is referred to as accordance and discordance. Um, agreement being accordance and discordance being disagreement. And so it gives us a, a ratio, basically, of how many pairs of data are in agreement with one another, how many pairs of data are in agreement with one another. So that is, is one kind of advantage to Kendall's Tau, is that it's kind of an intuitive way to interpret what's actually happening in the data. Um, some advantages of Kendall's Tau versus Spearman um, is that Kendall's Tau has a better estimation of the population parameter. Um, the p-values tend to be more accurate when we have small sample sizes. And then one thing that we notice when we're comparing Spearman to Kendall's is that the Spearman value tends to be inflated relative to Kendall's. And we'll, we'll, talk, we'll see that when we do some of the examples. Now one thing that Spearman does a little bit better than Kendall is when we have pairs of data that have small disagreements like we see in the first two columns here, the experienced evaluator versus the second evaluator, we can see some discrepancies, but they're fairly small. Um, and Kendall's Tau would pick that up and, and be able to, to quantify that for us quite easily. If you look at the third evaluator compared to the experienced evaluator, you see there's a couple instances where there's very large disagreement or very large discordance between uh, the experienced evaluator um, and evaluator number three. You can see here, experienced evaluator ranks a particular person as first the best performance and that third evaluator ranks that person as the worst performance. And so when we have huge discrepancies like that in the possible scores, then Spearman actually does a better job of detecting that. It'll give us a, a weaker correlation um, than Kendall's Tau will. And again, you'll see that when we do an example. So those are some of the kind of pros and cons of Spearman's versus Kendall's, Kendall's Tau. Um, and depending on the situation you're in, depending on the kind of data you're going to see, um, one might work better than the other for you as far as being able to detect significant differences. It is considered a non-parametric um, test because of the fact that we're, we're looking at uh, ranked data, um, both variables being ranks. So our sensitivity for detecting significant differences is a little bit less, a little bit weaker. So let's go ahead and see how this would actually work. So we're going to go to the Analyze menu, and we're going to choose Correlate, and then Bivariate. And I've moved the three uh, variables over into the Variables box, and I've gone ahead and selected Kendall's Tau and Spearman, just so we can kind of see the differences between some of the values that we're going to get when we do uh, these kinds of analysis and kind of compare them side to side to see the differences that we'll see. All right, so go ahead and click OK. And so let's look at um, Kendall's Tau first, uh, comparing the experienced evaluator versus evaluator number two, where we saw in the raw data there seemed to be a fairly good amount of agreement, but there was some discrepancy. And so the Kendall's Tau value would be 0.829, which would be considered a very strong correlation. Again, a perfect correlation is 1.0. And so uh, this is a strong correlation. In other words, there's strong relationships among the two sets of rankings. Uh, you could say that there's strong agreement between these two rankings. And it certainly is significant at the level of 0.05. Now, if we go down to the Spearman's 
Spearman's uh, row, the correlation coefficient for Spearman, for that same relationship, we can see that, as I had mentioned, the correlation is even higher. It seems to be a little inflated compared to, to Kendall's tau. Again, very strong, almost a perfect correlation. Um, and so, obviously, it's going to be a little bit easier to reject the null hypothesis if we've got a situation where we've got potentially higher um, R values using Spearman's row versus Kendall's tau. Now, to give you an idea of how Spearman's row can have an advantage against Kendall's tau, let's go back to that experienced evaluator versus evaluator number three, where we saw that most cases, those two, let's go back to the raw data, in most cases, those two evaluators were in agreement, an almost perfect agreement, except in two instances. And then the two instances that they didn't agree, you can see subject number 14 and subject number one, there was a huge discrepancy. And so our ability to be able to see that and be able to track that um, is going to be different using Kendall's tau versus Spearman's row. So let's go back then to the output and we can, we can look at the R values here. So here's that experienced evaluator versus evaluator number three. And you can see in Kendall's tau we have an R value of 0.505, which is a moderate correlation and statistically significant using the level of 0.05. But if we go down to Spearman's row and look at that same correlation, experienced evaluator to evaluator number three, we can see we've got a weaker R value. So Spearman's is being a little more stringent and a little more precise in picking out those big discrepancies that we saw. So we have a lower R score, and then here we see that this would not be significant at the alpha level 0.05. So to summarize, when we use Kendall's tau, we can use it as an alternative to Spearman's row. It works quite well when we have variables that are both ordinal scale data, and it is non-parametric. In other words, it's looking at the proportion of pairs of data that agree versus disagree, and we get an R value that will give us that estimation. Um, for the most part, it seems to be a little more precise than Spearman's row except in the instances in which we might have some very large discrepancies in the data, then Spearman's row might be the better alternative.